Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 11.4, which covers the fundamentals of probability. Probability is a way of uh, expressing the likelihood of a certain event, so we're going to go over the, the ways of uh, finding that. So, we have two types of probability, theoretical probability and empirical probability. So, first of all, before we get to those types, we'll just talk about probability in general. Probability is in, in, is a way of expressing the likelihood of event in the long long term. Okay, so if uh, we want to, like for instance, the probability of flipping a head on a fair coin is fifty percent or one half. Um, doesn't you know? Doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get five out of ten heads, but in the long run, you should expect about half of the flips to become to be head. Now this just shows that probability of any event is between zero and one or zero and one hundred percent. If you want to convert it to a percent and Probabilities that are closer to 1 or 100% are more likely. If we say that the probability of an event is 1 or 100%, then we're certain it's going to happen. But the closer to 1 it becomes, the more likely that probability uh, is to happen. Or that more likely that event, excuse me, is to happen. 50% probability is just one half, and then the closer it gets to 0, the more unlikely it becomes. And eventually, if we get down to a 0 probability, we're talking that the event is either impossible or has not happened yet. So that's a good picture to describe how probability measures likelihood and that it's between 0 and 1. So in theoretical probability, an experiment is any occurrence for which the outcome is uncertain and we want to know maybe the likelihood or sorry, the, the likelihood of certain outcomes from that experiment. So an experiment has a sample space. A sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment denoted by S and then we list out the outcomes. An event is uh, denoted by E is, this, is a subset of the sample space. So like, you know, a sample space for flipping coins is just S equals heads and tails. An event E could be just getting ahead. Um, the sum of all the theoretical probabilities of all possible outcomes always adds up to one. So that uh, is a rule of probabilities that helps us find the probability of certain events. Now this is the formal formula. I'm going to kind of jump ahead uh, and come back to this. This says if an event E has n uh, E equally likely outcomes, meaning the number of out outcomes is n, and its sample space S has this many outcomes, the theoretical probability is just this fraction, the number of ways event E can occur over the number of possible outcomes. So don't worry about that formula too much. Let's just look at an example, and then we'll kind of go back to the formula. So as a, a die is rolled once, it says find the probability of A rolling a 3 and B rolling an even number. So uh, it helps to look at the sample space when we do this. So that we're talking about the experiment is rolling a die, and we're going to look at the sample space and figure out the probabilities of various events, these two events in A and B. So the sample space when you roll a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're assuming we're rolling the cubic six-sided die. And um, those, so those are the six outcomes, and they are all equally likely. So we want to know the probability of rolling a 3. Well, the probability of rolling a 3, the formula says, give us the number of ways that that outcome can happen over the total number of outcomes in the sample space. Well, how many different ways can you roll a 3? Well, it's just one way that you can roll a 3. So the numerator is 1, and the number of outcomes is 6, because there's 6 different outcomes. common mistake here is to, to put 3 over 6, because the number 3 is 3, but the only, there's only one way that you can roll 3, so the probability is 1, 6. Now if you want, you can convert that to a percent. Um, I'll show that on the calculator here. You do 1 divided by 6, and convert that to a percent. I would call it 6, oops, sorry, I was supposed to do times 100. So let me just multiply by 10 again, excuse me. I could call that 16.7% probability. So it's up to you if you want to give the fraction of the percent. Okay, let me go back. All right, the second one was the probability of rolling an even number. Well, there's three different even numbers, 2, 4, 6. So the way of rolling an even number, or the number of ways that we can roll an even number is three. There's three different ways we can roll an even number, divided by the six possible outcomes. Three divided by six is one half, and we know that that's 50%. Let's do another one from the standard 52 card deck. It says find the probability of being dealt a king. So in the 52 card deck, there are four kings, 
and there are 52 possible cards. 4 divided by 2, if we reduce that, is 1 over 13. Now, if you're nervous about reducing fractions, let me show you on the calculator how you can do this. So, um, 4 divided by 52, you get the decimal, and you press the math, convert to fraction button, and it'll reduce it to a fraction. If you have a different calculator like the TI-30X2S, I know there's a button that can basically do the same thing, but you'll probably want to look that up on Google. It should be really easy to find that. Um, so if you need to reduce the fraction for my math lab, for me, it doesn't matter. I can just take the percent, which would be 7.7% or the fraction. Up to you. Let's look at the other uh, uh, event. It says being dealt a heart. Well, there are 13 hearts out of 52 cards, so 13 divided by 52 reduces to 1 out of 4, which is 25%. If you're not familiar with the deck of cards, I'm going to provide a sheet that uh, shows all the cards so you can see the suits and, the, the say, the kings, queens, aces, and jacks, and all the numbers so you know what the, the, the number of ways that these outcomes can occur. Empirical probability is the second kind of probability. Uh, we don't do this as much, but it's, uh, it, it's still pretty useful. So it applies to situations in which we observe how, many, how frequently an event occurs. So the big difference between empirical probability is we have a certain frequency from a table, like we actually have counted things up from an experiment. So computing empirical probability is the observed number of times E occurs divided by the total number of occurrences. It's very similar. Its form is very similar. It's just the what, way we're looking at. Uh, to convert the prob or to compute the probability. So like this, we have a table. Let's say we sampled 242 people and asked them about their marital status and if they were male or female. So if one person is randomly selected from the population above, find the probability that person is female. Well, we need to figure out the total number of females, which is summed up here, 124, and the total number is 242. So if we did 124 divided by 242, that would give us about 0.51. If the question said, what's the probability that the person is married, then the ter total number of people that are married is 130. We would take 130 and divide by 242. So that's how we do empirical probability, very much like theoretical. We're just taking the number of the characteristic and dividing by the total number uh, from the population or sample. So that's it. We're going to move on to a little bit more complicated prob probability questions in 11.6. Good luck. We'll see you then.